People are not so fearful and consumed with this life that they really do neglect the resurrected life. They neglect Jesus. They neglect their relationship with God that somehow that's not as important as all the other things that I'm involved in. And, and, and I'm not saying things aren't important, but we have to ask ourselves, what's the most important? If I can go to this or serve God, what am I gonna do? We should better serve God. And part of serving God is to make sure that we're in a church, a local body that teaches the Word of God. Not candy coating it, telling jokes all day long, but teaching us something to hang on to. So many people or too many people have an opinion of who Jesus is or what they want him to be like. But only the Bible can really show us who and what Jesus really is and what he's really like. The first week was I am the vine. The second week was I am the good shepherd. The third week was I am the bread of life. Fourth week I am the way. Fifth week was I am the light of the world. Now there's seven times Jesus invokes this I am. And the one that we're not gonna really go over that was kinda covered in I am the way is I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved. In other words, you can't enter through any other door. But today, I am the resurrection and the life. So let's pick it up in John 11, verses 25 and 26. This is the story of Lazarus. And Jesus told her, talking about Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this, he said, Martha. So Jesus is telling them, I am the way, I am the resurrection and the life. And again, we get the term I am from Exodus 3 when Moses was speaking with God and says, God, who shall I say send me or sent me? And should I just tell him it's the God of our ancestors? And God says, I am who I am sent you. Tell him I am who I am sent you. And so now Jesus is using this term. And, and when he uh, is led, so he's letting the people know by using this term who he is, who he truly is. He's saying, I am the resurrection life. He's saying, I am God. And, and that didn't make a lot of people happy in that day. God is, I am. And that's what Jesus was saying, I am. And that means the eternal, unchanging, self-existent one, infinite and glorious in every way and above and beyond all created things, he's saying he is God. So when he says, I am the resurrection life, he is saying that he is God, that he is the eternal unchanging. Everybody say unchanging. Because that's what we really need to understand about the word of God and God, he's unchanging. He doesn't change for you. He doesn't change for society. He doesn't change for COVID. He doesn't change for anyone or anything. His word is forever settled in heaven and earth. And so that's what he was saying. So when Jesus applies the title I am to himself, he is claiming to be God, not a helper to God or a great teacher, but the divine, eternal, preexistent, infinite, perfect being, God. So the Jews knew him Oh, the Jews knew that when he was taking on this title, he was saying, I am God, I am, I am God. I am the Messiah, which is when they picked up stones to kill him in John 8, 59. They were so angry because he kept using this terminology, I am. He was saying, I am God. They were so mad, they picked up rocks to throw at him, to stone him to death. But Jesus said, it wasn't my time to die, so he just left. They couldn't do it. And, and how many of y'all know when you're kids about throwing rocks? Anybody throw rocks when they're kids? Like, find me a rock. You know, you're mad at someone, someone bigger, find me a rock. I was fighting my younger brother, Pastor Troy, one time, and we were really getting into it. And I guess I popped him pretty good or something. And, and he picked up this rock, so I took off running in my backyard. I'll never forget, he hit me right in the middle of the back with this rock. Then I turned around, and the words were, I'm going to kill you right now. <laughs> so rocks hurt. So, you know, so they were finding a rock to kill Jesus, and he left. 
The thing that we all need to realize is Jesus is the solution to the problem that ails humanity. He is not just a prophet or a good teacher. He is the solution. He is the resurrection and the life. He is God. And every time he said one of the I am statements, he was revealing to the world, to us today and to them back then, who he really is. See, too many of us want to come to Jesus and see him just as a good teacher, a prophet, a good man, if you would. And people that tell me that, well, he was just a good person. Listen, if he was only a good person, he was the greatest liar in the history of humanity. So he, he's much more than all that. So too many of us want to come to Jesus and see him as a good teacher because there's no accountability responsibility or just a prophet or a good man. Or we treat him like a wizard or genie, someone who can just make our life better, easier by granting all of our wishes. And that's not who he is. He is God. And we need to believe that he's a God without limits. See, people always seem to place limits on God's ability. We tend to want to make God something or someone that we can understand instead of believing and understanding and, and re the realization that he's the God of the impossible. He can make the impossible possible. We always want to lessen God's ability. That's why you hear people say quite often, well, that's not for today, or this is not for today. Whatever they're talking about, about healing's not for today. Prosperity's not for today. Giving money, you know, uh, forgiving. So many things in the Bible, speaking in tongues, for instance, is not for today. That's why they constantly use that terminology because they're trying to lessen God to make him something that we can understand, yet God constantly says his ways in Isaiah are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. We can never really think the thoughts of God. And so we need to understand that he's the God of the impossible. The truth is until we believe in Jesus as God, we will never really experience him working in our lives. And so here's a family, talking about Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. Here's a family that Jesus was very close to. They were his friends. And, and, and Jesus was doing ministry around Jerusalem with his friends, but the people there tried to kill Jesus, so he left. And he and his disciples left and went outside into the countryside and were doing ministry there when Lazarus gets sick. Now Martha and Mary send for him to come at once. In John 11, verse four and six, four through six, the Bible says, but when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. No, it, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha and Mary and Lazarus, he stayed where he was for the next two days. And, and you will see why these days are important here in, in a moment. Then we read right after that that Lazarus dies. It's after that that Jesus says, finally, let's go back to Bethany or Judea, or, you know, that part of, of, the, of the area where our brother Lazarus has fallen asleep. Luke chapter 11, verses 7 through 14, I'm going to read. The Bible says, finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. But his disciples objected. Rabbi, they said, only a few days ago, the people in Judea were trying to stone you. Are you going there again? And Jesus replied, there are 12 hours of day, daylight every day. During the day, people can walk safely. They can see because they have the light of this world. But at night, there is danger of stumbling because they have no light. Then he said, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but now I will go and wake him up. The disciples said, Lord, if he is sleeping, he will soon get better. They thought Jesus meant Lazarus was simply sleeping, but Jesus meant Lazarus had died. So he told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And for your sakes, I love this statement, and for your sakes, for our sakes, I am glad I wasn't there. For now, you will really believe. Come, let's go see him. And so when Jesus finally arrived in Bethany, Lazarus had already been in the grave four days, and that's significant. 
And when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him. And she says, if only you would have been here, my brother would be alive. And this is when Jesus says at the beginning when I said in John eleven twenty six, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone, everybody say anyone, anyone. who believes in me will live even after dying. Jesus is the solution to the problem in our lives because he's the only way to eternal life. He is the answer to what ails humanity, the sicknesses, the sin, being lost. And people believed in that day. The reason it's significant that Jesus came on the fourth day is because people in that day believed you could be raised from the dead within three days. And so John goes into great detail to explain that Jesus waited until the fourth day. See, there's a Jewish custom or culture, I guess. Lightfoot says it. He quotes a remarkable tradition of Ben Kafra, which, which you got to understand in those days, in the Jewish days, they, they, they told the stories orally. So they would tell the stories um, orally. And so they would tell the story. And, and the Jews believed at that time, uh, Ben Rafa, Kafra says, Grief reaches its height on the third day. For three days, the spirit hovers above the tomb, if perchance it may return to the body. But when it sees the fashion of the countenance changed, it retires and abandons the body. So they basically believed or thought that the soul of man would hang around for three days. That's why he said it was the third day, it was the height of grief. That, that this person didn't come back to life, they departed. Remember what Jesus said, I'm gonna wait so that you'll really see. So on the fourth day he comes. After the third day, so the soul has departed, it's gone. They, so they kind of believed that you could be raised from the dead during three days, but when that was done, it was over. So through his actions, Jesus is demonstrating that his delays we're not denials. And I think that's important for our life. Just because of the delay and the things you're praying and believing for doesn't mean it's a denial. You just got to wait and watch the glory of God. We've got to see God move. And sometimes God, I think, doesn't move when we exactly want him to because then we think we're in charge instead of being grateful to a God that's more than enough. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus is inviting us to life. But when Martha thinks all hope is lost, Jesus does something absolutely amazing. John 11, 38 through 45, Jesus was still angry at it as, his arrive, as he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across its entrance. He said, roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible because bodies decompose. And Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Now you gotta understand the people standing there were all kinds of people, the Pharisees, the Sadducees that actually put him to death. They, they were, everybody was watching this because who comes and says roll the stone away on the fourth day? His body decomposing, smelling, and Jesus praised this prayer. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in a head cloth. And Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Or, or if you would, loose him and let him go. See, that day was an incredible day. So now you know why the days are important. Because they didn't believe you could come back after the third day. But Jesus is trying to tell them, don't you get it, boys? I am God. I'm God come in the flesh so you can see who I really am. 
See, Jesus came to give us life, not just life on earth, but everlasting life. And people spend so much time on this natural life and very little emphasis on their relationship with God or Jesus. Everything else seems to be more important than honoring God. It's sad to see how people treat the things of God. It's just, they think it's just not that important. That God will be there when, when I get around to him and, or where, if I need him. Until, the, until then, there are so many more important things in my life. It's the scripture that says in the last days. Now, you've got to understand, the last days started or began when Jesus was resurrected and went to seat at the right hand of the Father. That's when the last days. So when they talk about the last days, that's when they began two, over 2,000 years ago, right at 2,000 years ago. But what I believe is that we're in the last of the last days now. So much prophecy is coming to pass. And I think what's sad for the church is we really don't get it because majority of the churches don't talk about Satan or the devil or the Antichrist, the mark of the beast, or any of those things. But the Bible says in the last days, people will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. In other words, they'll put the natural things of this world above God. And you hear people say, I don't want Jesus to come back. I don't want him to come back yet because I have not gotten married. I haven't had my kids, my 2.7 kids, whatever that is. Or I haven't finished my education. I haven't, I haven't you know, built my business. I haven't started a career. I, 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 I want all these things. I haven't got my driver's license. I want to have all these things happen before Jesus comes back. That's the group. That's the spirit of the Antichrist that's in the world that men will be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. That we don't want Jesus to come back for selfish reasons. If there's any reason that we would say if you could tarry, it's to get one more person born again. That's the heart of the believer. That should be your heart, my heart. Other than that, God, come whenever you want. I'm ready. If you are the resurrection and life, come. Who cares about all this natural stuff? Everything you earn, everything you own on this earth stays on the earth. When Jesus comes, it won't mean anything. It's for you to use while you're on the earth. And we put those things above the resurrection and the life. Too many people do. Church is just a a novel thing we do. If you listen to some of the new studies, it's once every six weeks people come to church. Weak pastors keeping their churches closed out of fear of retribution from a government. When did we get such wussy leaders anyway? I, I just, sissies, they're just, they're weak. I, I'm just telling you, where, where do we get, and, and all over the country, it's not just preachers, it's, it's so many, we just, we're just like sheep going to the slaughter without even protesting. And I just wasn't geared that way. I've asked God many times, God, why do I think like I think? Because I believe in a holy God that's bigger and greater than all this junk that's going on. And I believe my life is more accountable to him than it is to this government that's ruining our lives and our nation. So we have to be more lovers of God and put God first. People tell me, well, I got to go do this. I mean, it's funny. I got to go to a birthday party so I can't come to church. I'm like, what? I mean, I, I, I think about what we put before God. Well, God, I would do that or whatever it is, but man, I'm busy. I, I got to go do this, 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 and this. Folks, in the last of the last days, we better be putting God first in our lives. We better figure that out. The life that was given to you by God himself is that Jesus is the resurrection and life. No one comes to the Father except by him or through him. No one comes to God except through him. Let me say that again, nobody. The people say, well, there's all kinds of ways to God, not the real God. You come through one door, and that's through Jesus Christ. Or you don't come at all. Well, I know God. Do you know Jesus? No, but I know God. You can't know God without Jesus. There is no relationship for you. You're deceiving yourself 
whether you're online or in here, you're deceiving yourself that you can have a relationship with the true God without going through Jesus. It's just not possible. It can't happen. You find God through one source, and that's the resurrection and life. That's why Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. So here's what we know. Jesus is coming very soon. Then the question is, what will be important to you? People are so fearful and consumed with this life that they really do neglect the resurrected life. They neglect Jesus. They neglect their relationship with God that somehow that's not as important as all the other things that I'm involved in. And, and, and I'm not saying things aren't important, but we have to ask ourselves, what's the most important? If I can go to this or serve God, what am I gonna do? We should better serve God. And part of serving God is to make sure that we're in a church, a local body that teaches the Word of God. Not candy coating it, telling jokes all day long, but teaching us something to hang on to. And so many so-called believers, they just want candy and junk all day long. They don't want steak and potatoes and enchiladas and green chili chicken enchiladas. They, <laughs> and some frijoles and papas and tortillas. They don't want all that. You know, I love, I love heating up tortillas on a gas stove. Anybody like that? I, I like them to get like a little burnt almost a little bit. Then put a bunch of butter or whatever I want him and just, ch come on, somebody. That, you don't, when you get out of New Mexico, you don't know nothing about that. Eternal life is not simply the quantity or how long, but also the quality of the life. How good. Eternal life is found exclusively in Jesus and Jesus alone. He is the resurrection and the life. It is received by believing in Jesus. It's a, it's a gift of God's grace. You can't earn it or deserve it. You, you can't earn what God is giving. You can't earn the resurrection and life. You have to receive it just like you are. You can't get better to receive him. You can't, you can't think, well, I've done so much, so I can't receive him. Because it's not about earning or deserving. It's just a gift that God freely gives because of his grace and his mercy for whoever wants to participate and partake of the resurrection and the life. It is the only satisfying option for the hunger and thirst of the soul of humanity. He is the solution to the problem. What's the problem? That we're lost. And so many are going to find themselves in eternal death, in hell, damnation. And you think, but I'm a good person. Listen, that is not relevant. You, 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 that's your own evaluation. God has deemed us all not good. And lost. And he says, the only hope for you is a Savior that will come and pay the price that you should be paying. And Jesus, who is all man and all God, the resurrection and the life, the only way, the only door, the vine that we gotta stay connected to, the bread of life, the light of the world. Only through him do we receive eternal life and have a relationship with God the Father. Only through him. Jesus is the life and resurrecting that we all need. That's who Jesus is. When he says, I am the resurrection and the life, he's saying, I am God, I am eternal. I'm the God of the impossible. Do you believe on me? He can resurrect anything. The worship team's gonna come and we're gonna do things a little different as we close today. We got lots of time, I'm way early. And they're gonna, we're gonna worship God for a few moments, I'm gonna come back and I'm going to give you online or people in here an opportunity to get right with God. You need the resurrection life. You need to make God number one in your life. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, his ways, his thinking. And then you'll have eternal life. And then he said, I'll give you the things in the natural world that people seek. 
So as they come and we worship, I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to come back after that. And, and we're going to talk about resurrecting things in your life and give you an opportunity to, to seek God here at this moment. So as we worship, let's worship an almighty God. Let's worship Jesus who is all God, the resurrection and the life. Go ahead. Hey, with your East Campus, East Mountain, Rio Rancho Central, stand to your feet as all across the city we worship the resurrected King today. Knowing that He is who He says that He is, let's lift our voices in a response as we honor Him. The head that walks was crowned with thorns, is crowned with glory. up a shout all across the city for our king today let's think about it the fear that held us now gives away Father, in the powerful name of Jesus, we lift our hands in worship and adoration to the Most High God. The resurrection and the life. We thank you for being in our midst. There's two or three gathered in your name. There you are in the midst. So we thank you for being here. In Jesus' name. If you're here today or you're online and you've walked with God, you've walked away. This is your moment to get it right. To receive the resurrection and life back in your life. Maybe you're online or in here and you've never really given God your life. Maybe you thought those things that, that, you know, I'm a good person. And here's what we learn. Good people don't go to heaven. Nice people don't go to heaven. Generous people don't go to heaven. The only ones that go to heaven are saved people go to heaven. And that's what Jesus is saying. Don't you get it? You can't get there on your own, no matter what you think of yourself. Even what society says is what God thinks. So if you're here and you've never really given Jesus your life, you've never believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus with the intention to follow him, to learn his ways, to change your life and to allow him to change your life. This is your moment. Whether you're online or in the house and wherever you're at online, I would just ask you for a moment of reverence. And as you're standing with every head bowed and you said, Pastor Steve, would you pray with me? I'm ready to receive the resurrection life. If he's the only way to God, I want the only way. And I want Jesus in my life. I want to come back. I've walked with him. I've walked away, man. I've strayed, but I'm ready to come home. Will he have me? And the answer is yes. He'll always forgive you. All you got to do is ask him. All you got to do is come home. 
If that's you in Jesus' name all over this place, and I, I, I ask you to do something just so you can say, I don't care what anybody else thinks, I just want God in my life. God, I want you in my life. If that's you, and then do it at home. If you're at home by yourself or with people, do the same thing if you need to get right. And if you're here and you say, Pastor, would you include me in your prayer? Right now in Jesus' name, right where you're standing, would you just lift your hand up? Is there anybody here? Thank you. God bless 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 you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. As I look across the top, God bless you all up there. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. There's so many. We're going to get right with God today. And the resurrection in life is going to come in your life. But what if he doesn't? He will. It's not a matter of if if he won't or will. It's because you ask. And he said, whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. So we're going to call. So would you pray this prayer with me? If you're out there online and you're by yourself, pray it out loud. If you're with a group, everybody pray it. And if you're in here, I want everybody to pray this along with all you that lifted your hand. Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you pray, Father, I choose to believe in Jesus. And I believe he is the resurrection and the life. And I believe he's the only way to you. So with my heart, I believe in him. And now with my mouth, I willingly confess, Jesus, be Lord of my life. I thank you for saving me. Please forgive me. And I thank you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Let's thank God.